before? How many of you would applaud, be honest now, if the applause sign had not gone on? <laughs> you know how I got that reaction? I just turned on the applause sign. Right. Right? <laughs> Thank you for coming. We have a good show tonight. Aren't you a sartorial... You, well, like you, you said that you're a paradigm for the rest of it. A little something I picked up in Rome. Are you serious? Yes, I got it. That's the day I want to see the Pope. <laughs> and he... Excuse me a minute. And he, <laughs> and he wanted they... to know what Johnny Carson was really... Oh, now get out of here. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I have um, a late report from the newsroom just came in. Our new national security advisor, William Clark, just put all his watches into a blind trust. <laughs> Let me remind you tonight that in case of flood, your uh, seat cushion can be used as a... <laughs> as a flotation device. Those of you who fly, that always kills me, that thing in an airplane. Have you ever seen that, yeah. the seat cushion? Mm -hmm. How would you like to be in the ocean with that seat cushion <laughs> as a flotation device? Uh, anyway, welcome to the show. We, uh, of course, we say Hollywood. We uh, actually do the show from Burbank, California. Lovely community. Um, people say, what's to do? There are a lot of celebrities live in Burbank. Did you know that? A lot of famous people. For example, we have a famous inventor uh, that lives in Burbank, Dr. Leopold Fechner. <laughs> That's right, Dr. Fechner. <laughs> Dr. Fechner's latest invention is for people who want to commit suicide in the shower. It's called Rope on a Rope. <laughs> I, I should point out that some of Dr. Fechner's inventions leave a little, be, a little to be desired. He came up um, about a year ago with the first solar-powered pacemaker. Uh, it... It gets you through the days all right, but the nights, you're pretty much, pretty much on your own. Uh, you know, I ran into a British couple today from, uh, from Britain who were vacationing here today, because our show goes over to England, yes. you know, and uh, once a week. And I asked him, I said, do you, do you get the Tonight Show where you live? And he said, yes, we watch it, but we don't get it. <laughs> We're trying anyway. Uh, well, as I mentioned Mr. Clark. He is our new, uh, William P. Clark, our new national security advisor. Had his first day in office, and uh, according to reports, he found a tape in his office a desk drawer. And it was uh, apparently of Richard Allen's meeting with the, the Japanese when he was, you know, arranging the interview with Nancy Reagan. And on the tape, you could clearly hear Allen saying, Gee, I was hoping for a Longines. <laughs> Apparently, there's been some change with our national security advisor. William Clark is now being given access to President Reagan whenever he wants it. And also, Reagan is being given access to Hig whenever he wants it. That's a kind of nice thing. <sighs> Sometimes I just take deep breaths between these jokes. Uh, right now, the thing going on in Washington, they're having a lot of high-level... Um, uh, policy talks. Uh, it's on the agenda at the White House. For example, there are high-level meetings going on between uh, West Germany's Chancellor, West Germany's Chancellor Helmut Schmidt, our new National Security Advisor. I just mentioned uh, William Clark. Uh, General Haig is on those meetings. Um, President Reagan, uh, George Bush, uh, our Vice President, is not in on those meetings because Reagan has given him a, a another duty right now, and that's to see that the surplus cheese. <laughs> does not fall into the hands of unscrupulous, starving middle Americans. <laughs> and uh, Leonid Brezhnev, Soviet Premier, again denied today that the Soviet Union played any part in the military takeover of Poland. Brezhnev also said in the same conversation that they did not invade Afghanistan. <laughs> that all of those guys there are on a singles vacation called C Club Red. <laughs> That's all it is. <laughs> There's not much good news. The stock no. market. You're not. Are you into the stock market at all? Not I too much. don't want to be personal in no. front of all the millions of people here, but uh, no. 
17 points went down today. I don't have to worry because I have a financial genius, bombastic Bushkin. Uh, no precious metals. Told me to buy kazoos a few years ago. And, uh, and he put me in a precious cheese. Precious. The San Francisco 49ers um, football team are... Uh, are working out right now on the uh, football field in Anaheim where the Rams play, getting ready for the playoff game against Dallas this coming Sunday. Who says we don't have a championship team in Los Angeles? <laughs> have, you seen, have you seen the commercials on television of the Ram owner, Georgia Frontieri, during the American Express card commercial? Yeah, she's doing American Express card. I think she's trying to get enough money to sign Vince Veragamo. He was a quarterback we had here before. <laughs> Are you ready for the weird news item of the day? Yes. This is one of those little things that you see in the newspaper. They use as a filler item. Uh, back in New Jersey, 2,000 pounds of human hair that was going to be made into wigs fell off a truck <laughs> in New Jersey and, and blocked the highway. <laughs> Police are still combing the area. I would have made that up even if it didn't happen. <laughs> anyway, that, that actually did happen. Too. They swept up all the hair, and Reagan announced they're gonna, he's going to give it to the poor as part of his... <laughs> part of the surplus dandruff program. <laughs> anyway, tonight, we got two very amusing people on the yeah. show tonight. Uh, Ed and Doc. <laughs> Arriva Derci, Roma. Close to Maple Oh, nice. Oh, no, we do have, we have Mr. Alan King with us tonight. Oh, yeah. And Charles Nelson Riley is also here. Well, should be fun. Thank you. is a perfect crowd for our first guest. This crowd is just great for this guest. A famous visitor from the East. The all-ignition, all-seeing, all-knowing, all-telling, famous seer, sage, soothsayer, and former air traffic controller, <laughs> Karnak the Magnificent. I just thought to myself, you've been visiting us now for 20 years. That is true. Wonderful when you come to visit us. It's always so enlightening for us. I hold in my hands the envelopes. A child of four could see these envelopes are hermetically sealed. They've been kept in a mayonnaise jar in Funk and Wagnall's porch since noon today. No one knows the contents of these envelopes. But you, in your mystical and borderline divine way, will ascertain the answers to the questions, having never foreseen the question. Isn't that true, sir? If Karnak has time after that explanation, yes. <laughs> be padding your pipe. Nice to tell them what you're going to do before you do it. Give them a rough idea for getting to the humor. <laughs> Envelope number one. Hermetically sealed. <laughs> Awaits. Thank you. Are you finished? <laughs> May I have silence, please? Sometimes, Especially from you. Yes. Yes. <laughs> the answer to this question, sealed in this envelope, is a Christmas tree and Richard Allen. A Christmas tree and Richard Allen. <laughs> Name two things that got tossed out after the holidays. <laughs> Fish. 
Fish and chips. Fish and chips. If it keeps raining, who will be patrolling California's highways? Karnak, not used to this overwhelming <laughs> vote of confidence. <laughs> Police are still combing the area. No. <laughs> Sheep and husbands. Sheep and husbands. What does Elizabeth Taylor count to help fall asleep? <laughs> On Golden Pond. Where do urologists play ice hockey? Betty Crocker, Julia Childs, and Princess Diana. <laughs> Name three women with something in the oven. <laughs> Lawrence Welk and Rubik's Cube. Lawrence Welk and Rubik's Cube. That's what I said. Name two things that are square and hard to understand. <laughs> Muammar Gaddafi. Describe the sound a cow makes when it loses its lunch. Pennies from heaven. In the year 1990, how will the Social Security system be funded? Sweet and low. Sweet and low. How does Mickey Rooney like his women? Mr. Whipple? Pillsbury Doughboy and Mrs. Olson. <laughs> Name the next three people signed to fight Muhammad Ali. <laughs> Windex and Pablum. <laughs> How do you feed a test tube baby? What do you what do you feed it to? <laughs> I hold in my hand the last envelope. Yeah. May a weird city councilman rezone your sister as a business district. <laughs> Raiders of the Lost Ark, Arthur, and Taps. Name two movies and the Los Angeles Rams fight song. Tonight, Alan King and Charles Nelson Riley are here. Remember occasionally when we uh, do Karnak and I will say a weird holy man uh, mm -hmm. may despoil your sister's hope chest or something? Right, yeah. Well, some of you are. I wish I had his name. The fellow was kind enough to send us in. He was on vacation in India. And he took a, a picture of a holy man or yes. on the streets 
of Indians sent it in. He says, here's the weird holy man that you you're always of. talking right. about. This is not a gag shot. This is just the type of people you see. There is... <laughs> he said, it is a weird Indian holy man. Is that something? <laughs> I, I wish I had the fellow's name. We'll set that in. Now, anything we talk about on the show, if we get in any discussion, you can be sure that we will hear from an expert in the field. Remember the night we got a question uh, from blue cards in the audience? A wild question. And somebody said, which is cleaner or fresher, a dog's breath or a person's breath? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and we were discussing it. Right. You know, do you remember how that in- ended it all? Exactly. But the dog's supposed to be a very clean mouth. I know that. Well, that's one thing. I heard from uh, Warren Eckstein, who was a veterinarian, who apparently was on the show with David Letterman, I guess, when David had his... Uh, his dumb Morning dog show. on. Doesn't David oh, the have dog over here, yeah. Yeah, doesn't David have a dumb he has dog, a dog Bob, named Bob or something? Yes. Yeah. Anyway, he said he appeared with, uh, with David Letterman. And recently on your show, you had a discussion with Ed on the cleanliness of a dog's mouth in comparison to that of a human. As an animal behaviorist, I thought you might like to know the reason. The space between each tooth of a dog is greater than human's. Therefore, without that closed space, apparently bacteria... Doesn't collect that much. Doesn't collect as much, and dogs apparently have better breath. And a cleaner mouth. And a cleaner mouth than most humans. Now, Hmm. I wouldn't have known that, would you? I'd heard it. (laughs) I mentioned it that night. I'd heard that it's... Well, you've known some dogs. (laughs) I mean, you've had dogs. You've had dogs. I know what you mean. You're... You're referring to the fact that I have sold a dog food for 20 years. That's Naturally, right. I would meet you would a lot know. of dogs. Right. And we together have met a lot. Yes. <laughs> he, has a, he has a PS here. As the owner of a pet pig, uh-huh. I can vouch for their extraordinary intelligence. Yes. Because I have often said on this show, often, too, too often, <laughs> that a pig is smarter than a horse. Yes. And you keep saying that a horse, a horse is, smarter. is smarter than a pig. Well, this man says that they are extraordinary. Where is he from? What do you mean, where's he from? What town is he from? He's from Queenside, Long Island, New York. Oh, that's way out. <laughs> way out what? What's that got to do with it? It's way out. If he's not nearby, you know, we could have him on and challenge him. Are you still holding to the fact that a horse is smarter than a pig? Yes. Well, I'm afraid that you... No, that's not true. Oh, you a give, pig have not brought me if any you had evidence. It, I'll give you evidence. All right. A barn catches on fire. Yes. A horse will run right back into the barn. He may have left something. <laughs> like Humans a, run back into burning buildings. No, not very often. They do, no. to go get something. But, sure that, but that's, that's stupid. Sure, it's that stupid. That shows that they're stupid. Yeah. You don't run back. A pig would not run back no. into a burning He's building. He's too busy out in the mud eating orange peels. <laughs> Oranges are good for you, I and the peel that. is the best part of it. I don't know anything at all. <laughs> Why don't we eat them? What? Because we're stupid. Okay. No, I eat oranges. Do you? You right. peel, too? Well, nobody's going to give me a bucket of oats and get on my back and ride me for a mile and a quarter, either. You know, get me up at six in the morning and say, let's go around the track. A pig will lay in the mud yeah. and say, get out of here. Wait a I'm run around no Listen, track. You do that for three years. Yeah. And then they send you down to a big farm in Kentucky and have all these female horses. You just kind of... Have your way with all of them for the rest of your life. That's not bad. Three years of getting up early, I'd do that. Yeah, but you last about a week on that farm, too. (laughs) But what a way to go. Big just lies in the mud and goes... "Mm -hmm." Anyway, that's enough of that. They don't care. And they're clean. Pigs are clean. I don't know that. Okay. Anyway, um, I was going to introduce Alan, but we wanted to get this out of the way. Why, I don't know. But uh, we'll do this commercial, then Alan will come out and back me up. On this. We're not sure. Oh, yes, he will. So stay where you are. You'll be... That's nice. My first guest tonight. Uh, my first guest is an old friend, very funny man. He wears many hats because he has many heads. No, he doesn't. I mean. <laughs> Well, where does that expression come I from, don't you know? know? I don't we'll know. have to check on that. Why will we have to check on that? Nobody cares. But, but, but I mean, he comedes and he... Uh, he comedes? He comedes, he produces, he does all those kind of things. And he has a starring role in the movie Arthur... Uh, Arthur, Arthur, not, not Arthur. Author, Author, which is currently filming. That means right now. I'm just on the edge. I know. <laughs> Let him come out and comede. Why don't we do that? Would you welcome Alan King? Oh, 
author, author, author which author. I wish it was, author, author. Yeah. Was that a big money? That'd man? be big, wow. twice as good as author. Yeah, I, I guess it's uh, still, it's only the 6th of January, so Happy New Year. Thank when you. When do you officially quit wishing people Happy New Year? Is that a, is there a cutoff date or something? Well, I just saw somebody in Los Angeles this afternoon still selling Christmas trees. That wouldn't surprise me. Well, they're, they're aluminum out here, of course, so you can sell them all year round. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy. How are you? I'm very well. The yeah. beard we talked about last time Alan was here, it's yeah. for the picture. Yeah, and uh, I, I have another three weeks of shooting, and uh, I'm going to shave it off. It's getting a bit uncomfortable. Were you surprised that it turned out as white as it did? Actually, no. <laughs> <laughs> I just can't keep putting the crayon on my face. You know? No, I just put the beard on because, as I said, I wouldn't... I have seven scenes with Al Pacino... And I was looking to put a ring through my nose or, you know, something. Or uh, He's such a fun Little guy. distraction. Yeah. You're working with the top, uh, top people. Super guy. What do you want to talk about tonight? We have discussed uh, almost... How about everything. pigs and horses? <laughs> you have anything to say about that at all? Yeah, Jews are smarter than both. We don't bet on horses and we don't eat pigs. <laughs> oh. Good. Very good. <laughs> Not to the prepared material. <laughs> are you a... Vicky, are you Orthodox Jewish? Do you don't, don't you eat uh, fabric, no, I, I, pork at all? I mean, now yeah, I, there's uh, some modern Jews. I have, I mean, uh, yes, sir, yes, no, but uh, I come from Orthodox family, and right. uh, I don't think there's anything wrong with eating bacon and ham and everything. Right. But it uh, just gives me a better feeling yeah. not eating it because of my background and my training yeah. and my heritage. Yeah, those things hold hold tight, don't they? Yeah, it's it, it's important. It's it, yeah. it's important. Let me. me ask you something. Did your mother want you to be? I know one of your brothers is a doctor. I have right. Two, two, three brothers. brothers. All doctors? Three brothers are the doctors, and the only one who makes a house call is my mother. <laughs> my mother did want me to be a doctor. Yeah, that's what I figured. Uh, it... Was she terribly distressed when she found that you were working up in the mountains at 15 and doing jokes? Oh, yeah. Well, you see, when you're the youngest of eight children, eight. and they were all geniuses at school. Right. And I had to follow in their footsteps in the same classroom. So much was expected of me. Right. Then I was crazy. I was always getting into trouble. And uh, I, was, I went away with uh, Major Bose unit. I came in second on a Major Bose. Uh, Major Bose was the very famous old... He preceded, for the younger uh, old yeah. viewers, he preceded Ted Mack. Right, he was the uh, Major Bose amateur. And uh, we're talking about you, Major. <laughs> and uh, Major's gone to that great wheel up in the sky. Yes. Around and round and, she uh, goes. I came in second... The guy that won it, I'll never forget, I was 14, was a bald-headed man who took his knuckle, banged on his head, and accompanied himself to the bells of St. Mary. <laughs> Which, will give you an idea how good I had to be to come in second. <laughs> you know, I'm not trying to top your story, which I can't. I was on, remember the old Horace High traveling show? I went on that once in Omaha and lost to a guy with an accordion who finished with Lady of Spain. And there is no way, there is no way on this earth we can if you have to follow a guy playing Lady of Spain <laughs> with, with lots of those, <laughs> you're out of it, you're out of it. But, you know, and so, but what really was interesting, at least to me, was the fact that I was making, this was Depression years, I went on tour with the Major Bowes units, and I was making $75 a week, my father was making 35 of 40, you know. And so I had this obligation, this family feeling, of course, and I kept sending money home. So my oldest brother, one I've always, you know, ridiculed on television, oh, the, the doctor. doctor. Yeah. And uh, I sent him to Syracuse, which I'm very proud of. He went to Syracuse and graduated cum laude, Harvard Medical School. He went into the Army, World War II. A first lieutenant came out, a lieutenant colonel. He was the youngest member ever elected to the College of Diagnosticians and Surgeons. I didn't know that. And I wouldn't let him cut my nails, John. <laughs> It's your brother. It's your brother. He was 14. He used to wet the bed. <laughs> My mother still calls him the Midnight Sailor. <laughs> you don't want to go to any doctor who was called the Midnight That's Sailor. That's right. How does, how does he take this when you, when you uh, come well, on television and you uh, do this? Because he's, he's got now, to face his colleagues the next day. He, he doesn't have a private practice anymore. Right. He's uh, semi-retired. He's discard, eh? <laughs> no, but he, he's... Uh, He's now, he's a consultant. He teaches, yeah. he's a consultant. The consultant, that's the guy you bring in. When your doctor screws it up, you bring my brother in and he confirms it, you see? <laughs> he's the guy that hums you to death. You ever see the guy? I love when, when the consultant comes in and they look at the charts and the guy's laying in the bed there. And they, and they go, hmm, hmm, hmm. <laughs> Like the guy's going to get up and dance or something. <laughs> but he got very upset. We just had Christmas in Florida. We had kind of a family reunion. And my brother doesn't drink, but we had a couple of boozers for my birthday, and all of a sudden it all came out. You know, he said to me, you think it was easy practicing medicine with you as a brother? 
You think it was easy going into surgery Monday morning when you were on the Ed Sullivan show Sunday night with your big mouth? And you know, I saw this picture. Can you just see? As they were wheeling the bodies into the operating room, the nurse would say, did you know that Dr. Nyberg is Alan King's brother? You could see all these people jumping off the table, <laughs> naked people running down Fifth Avenue, you know? Well, you really did a number on them. I oh, mean, I you would really go after them. Well, because... For all doctors generally, not just Yeah, but you see, I, it was a personal thing. I felt that the age of, of specialization is going to destroy us. A yeah, doctor no is a general, general practitioner. Yeah. I mean, what do you do, sir? I'm a right nostril man. That's all he does. Yeah. <laughs> then he's got a partner that's left nostril, you know. And the thing that has always annoyed me, John, is the fact that their knowledge is no good to us because they won't share it with us. You can't get them on the phone. Yeah. I said to my brother, why don't you try calling your office, disguise your voice, and see if you can get an appointment with you. Yeah. yeah. It's always Miss Halsey speaking. How do you do? I'd like to speak to the doctor. Oh, the doctor's quite busy right now. Well, of course, I'm glad he is. I don't want some yuts waiting around for the phone to ring. <laughs> and uh, what, do, what do I have to do to speak to him? Well, what is it about? Well, I'd like two tickets to Fiddler on the Roof. <laughs> I'm sick! You know. And, but you know, the nurses... Johnny, the nurses <coughs> don't realize what they're saying. You, yeah. They really don't. What's it's it a, about? Yeah, no. It's, what is it about? I said, well, I'd like an appointment. One moment, please. <laughs> How about a week from Tuesday? I said, swell, I'll have the hearse drop me off. That'd be nice. <laughs> I won't have him nail the lid so the doctor can look in. <laughs> I mean, it really is outrageous. They don't realize this. And it's terrible. Uh, you know, things like... Uh, you well, know, you know what drives me crazy nowadays? Luckily, I'm a good help, but I went to the Mayo once for one of those checkups. You know where you're going. It's quite a place. And all of a sudden, as you get older, these kids come in, which are, are doctors. And you think it's some, you know, a, a guy down on an apprentice training program, and they're specialists. Because as we get older, and the doctor comes who's 28, and some of them look like they're 21, you know, and they got a tie-dyed smock on and gold chains. And, you know, usually, usually long hair tied in a bun. Yeah. That's always nice. And they speak Hindu. Yeah, I want a... I want a doctor like Norman Rockwell used to have on the cover of That's Saturday it. Evening Post. I want gray hair, spectacles, That's... sitting by the bedside, you know, holding your hand. And this kid comes in and says, hey, man, how's it going? Yeah, how what's feeling? happening, Daddy? <laughs> you know, when my father was operated on... My father's an irascible, wonderful man. And this doctor came in. He must have been 12. Yeah. And he, in, he said, I'm your doctor. My father said to him, no, you're the son of the doctor. <laughs> Send me a doctor. Send me a doctor. You've got to be over 50. Yeah. We, uh, I don't know if we have time, but yeah. My grandfather, who he died to be it, well, 104. Oh, come on. 100. No, seriously, 104. Well, that's remarkable. And, uh, and he was, he, he was a... Uh, a rabbi, uh, you know, and then, right. then and in the days when the rabbis wore the striped trousers and a silk hat, you know, the cutaway coat, he was an amazing man. And he was getting, I don't like to use this word because it's overused, it, a bit of senility was setting in, you know, but he was already about a hundred. And he lived with my mother. And now we have, th I have three doctors in the family, right. right? And the old man got up one morning and he wore the high boot, you know, the high shoes with the elastic on the side. And the old man walked in, if I may, he walked in, dragging the leg and my mother got hysterical and we called my brother and i said you better get over here right away he says well i'm not orthopedic i don't care what you are it's your grandfather get over here right. and there was a st john's hospital in brooklyn and i drove the car it's an absolutely true story they took the old man 100 years old what did he know what day it was you know and we took him to the hospital and i was, he was we were very close and i kept holding his hand and he, he looked around like he didn't know what they were doing to him. And they put him in, and they, three doctors with, and they were banging him, and they were taking tests. The old man was sitting there. And I waited about an hour, and my brother brought me in, and there were all the charts, you know, the x-rays. And he says, well, Alan, it says the x-rays show nothing. He said, but you got to understand, a man who may be 100, they weren't sure how old he was. Yeah. He said, the calcium deterioration, and, and they went into some long Latin... I said, well, he said, what do you do? He says, well, what we're going to do is we'll put ace bandages on, you know, on the leg, right. and give him some support. My brother, Reddy, was a bookmaker. <laughs> and, you know, it's the old joke, it wasn't him, we'd all starve to death. Right. My brother, Reddy, came overnight, everybody was upset, and we told him the story. My brother, Reddy, went into the bedroom, looked in the shoe, my grandfather's socks from the night before were jammed into the toe. That's why... <laughs>
And they were looking at the X-rays. Take the socks out. The socks were in the shape of the night. Remember the guy who had the terrible migraine headaches? The eyes bulged all the time? <laughs> hmm? And we went to all these doctors, and they said, we don't know what to do. You know, they, they gave him six months to live. And he says, yeah, I have this terrible pressure, he said, around the temples. Absolutely. My eyes are bugging out. The doctors didn't know what to do. And they, they said, you're, if that keeps up, you're going to die. And the guy says, well, if I'm going to die, I'm going to live it up pretty good. He said, I'm going to go out and get, buy new clothes and go to the best restaurants and so forth. And he goes into the men's store. Don't you remember this? He says, I'd like some new shirts. And the clerk says, what's your next size? And the guy says, 15. He says, you were a 15. He says, you get pressure up here and your eyes will bug out. He says, you need a 15 and a half. He said, don't kill you. Uh, take a break and we'll be right back. Stay where you are. Charles out here to join in this discussion. You know, I mentioned that you wear several hats. Charles Nelson Riley also wears uh, a number of hats. Uh, he is an actor. He's a very fine director. And uh, he's bizarre. He's one of the truly silly people, uh, which makes life fun. You should be crazy. And he's starring in an up-and-coming special with uh, Mikhail Baryshnikov. And he'll be in a two-hour episode of Love Boat. As uh, if time goes by uh, in this country, everyone in the country sooner or later will be on Love Boat. <laughs> Would you welcome Charles Nelson Riley? I hope you didn't take that about everybody no, being mean... on Love Boat as a downer, but I see people, you know, right. big casts, everybody appears on Love Boat. I have... Hello. You, I, we're all friends from New York. You know what I mean? It's a happy New Year. Thank you for my lovely voiceover introduction. It was lovely. Thank you. Thank you for everything. 20 you. years, congratulations. Thank you. I won't say happy New Year because we're not supposed to do that. Right? So, you know, but anyway. So, um, Just settle down. It takes you a while now to really you know, get acclimated. I did love Boat. Yes. Now, I never do nighttime TV because... Except this, uh -huh. because I'm on daytime. I'm hot on daytime. I know, you were very good on the match game. <laughs> well, I'm so hot on daytime, it's frightening, you know what I mean? But so I don't do nighttime, I pass it by. Mm. Why would I want a series? Why would I want to be that hot? Of course. So I do daytime. So they call me for Love Boat. I went. It was terrific. It was my home studio, 20th Century Fox. I, I pull it all together, you'll see at the end. But <laughs> 20th Century Fox... <laughs> And I did four years. I love it there. And I went and did and, and it did Love Boat two days. Six mm -hmm. o'clock, you got to get up for seven. Yeah. Make up 7.30. You get there at seven, you get a free breakfast. So I, my last play on Broadway was, of course, you know theater, so you don't know. So you're looking over there. See, my last play on Broadway was Charlotte. And you're drinking. See, this is interesting. You were looking... Well, I figure while you're looking at Alan, no, I can I get mean, a quick I drink. I know, but I mean... Alan's drinking while you're... Look at him, I got a That's drink. right. <laughs> so any... <laughs> So your last play was Charlotte. Well, that was yes. my last play. No, that was Charlotte. not. No, so I did Charlotte, which was a, not a good play. Mm. In fact, they're still getting over it now, and that was two years ago, because oh. I'm hot. <laughs> so anyway, I did this play for two years. Uh, no, for two years ago. And I bought tote bags for the cast. You know, opening night, you got to get a special gift for Broadway. So I bought these wonderful tote bags that said... Charlotte. Exactly. Mm -hmm. It said Charlotte, red and brown. They were adorable. Now, there were only two people in the cast, so I saved a lot of money. You just said, buy two tote bags. It wasn't Chorus Line or Avita or something where you could cost a lot of money. Two bags. So for two years, I carry my little bag that says... Charlotte. Thank you. <laughs> and I carry it with me, and it has my hair in it, and it has the script that I'm working on. What do you mean, and it has your hair? You should tell them that you... Well, it's hard to believe, <laughs> but... But I I'm wearing... It. No, I knew it. No. Not even knowing and I knew it. And they didn't comb New Jersey either. That's right. right. This was so tricky, the police so you got your, you got the So you got the piece in the bag. Oh, I ha Thank you. Right. I have the police in the... Uh, the, the piece in the Charlotte bag. Right, that's right. And I get to 20th Century in the morning. Uh, my two days. This was the second day. And you get there at 7 o'clock. You have fun. Because I, I worked there and I used to wave to the guy. Bobby, hi, how have you been? You know, because you're back at your home studio. Of course. And I didn't wear this. I wore a simple morning uh, outfit. You know, and then you waved to everybody. And the, these are the people you love. Of course. And then I put my bag over here on the canvas chair, which is my tradition. 
You know what I'm saying? Whenever I do uh, <laughs> something, I put the bag with the mm 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 in the, in the thing. Right. Now, I'm working opposite a wonderful actress, my friend for years, Miss Charlotte Ray. Oh, she's very Who's funny. Who's terrific. Very amusing. We're doing a two-hour special. We have big parts. It's my second day. So I put my hair in the bag. That's marked Charlotte. Right. Now, Charlotte has now become famous, like I have. You know, after so many decades, finally they go, oh. And so, you know, we get famous. So Charlotte now has a secretary. So at 7 o'clock, I'm sitting on the set with my bag, and Charlotte says to her secretary in her trailer, mm -hmm. see, dropping big words like secretary and trailer, oh, uh, there's a, a bag on the set with my name on it. Will you go out and get it? Because uh, uh, you have to bring it back. So the secretary goes out, and she's looking for a bag on the set that says Charlotte. And naturally, my hair of is in the bag. <laughs> so they take the bag, and they go away. I don't know that, because I'm waving. Bobby, how wonderful to see you. Because you're back at your old well, studio. Well, I'm in my home studio. Right. So <laughs> finally, cute. So finally, they say, Mr. Riley, uh, makeup and hair. And I go, well, I, I uh, because they got to match the shots from the day before. Sure. I mean, I, I, I got hair, you know, just these beautiful curls on the deck the day before, and you can't put a, a line in that says what happened to Harry's hair. Well, it was a big win. <laughs> and it blew over. I mean, it would be hard to follow. His head caught you know on fire saying? last night. You got to match the point. No. So I said, well, I was sure I was bringing. I thought I, I, thought I brought it. It was right here, my hair. And I have these, I have cute baseball caps, you know what I mean? And then you have to face the bat. I love you. <laughs> so anyway, to make a long story it's too more late. boring. Too late now. Oh, yes. <laughs> they had to hold up shooting for five, six hours while I found this secretary in the beauty parlor with right. my hair. Don't you have a, don't you have standby hair? I mean, a, 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 a couple of... At nineteen hundred dollars? No, I have one. You're putting me on. Nin no, that's how much they cost. This is three Italian women. <laughs> one for white. I didn't know that. Yes, one for white, one for all these things. That you have to know if you have your own show. So you only have one. Uh, At nine? Yeah, one. You don't have an emergency? Uh, no, uh, the whole thing is an emergency. I wouldn't know. Right. <laughs> but anyway, what happens lately is I've been throwing them away. You know what I mean? I go to a hotel. Yeah. Uh, this is so... Uh, it's not... Uh, the thing is, uh, I shouldn't return to nighttime TV. You know, what I'm saying is... I go to a hotel, and I take it off a lot lately. I've not, I haven't had it on much. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Uh, yes, I think so. So I, I, I take it off. I'm trying to get into the older parts. You know what I'm saying? Have you ever worked sans hair? Yeah. On all my the other shows, before I got this, I had no hair. I was like bald. They said, here comes the bald man. I walked in. I went, hello. And I waved everyone on the set. But... That was your home base. You hadn't my... been there for a long time. You know what? I want to get rid of it. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So I'm practicing not wearing it. Oh. So I throw it away a lot. But now you don't know where it is. And it sticks. Because it's got to stick. I mean, if you're going to go dancing. You so know what I mean? Therefore, it makes it very difficult, I suppose, to throw away. I mean, you... <laughs> right. And then it sticks... <laughs> But sometimes I put it in a towel and the, and, the, and the maid throws it away in the hotel. She must have thought that had been a hell of a party. <laughs> what did you come in? Yeah. What that? that boggles the mind. Uh, can I do a commercial here? Uh, oh, sure. Sure, we have to do this. Okay. You know. uh, we'll we'll be back and right, we'll discuss Hi, Bobby. <laughs> we just have a couple of minutes here. What, uh... What's in store for you this coming year? I haven't seen any commercials lately. You used to do some commercials for Mr. Wizard. You oh, yeah, did I did it. a lot of commercials, but you see, I confess this to nationwide television that I'm the kiss of death for any product I work for. Why? <laughs> well, because I do a commercial, and they call me up, and they say, Mr. Riley, uh, they're not moving in the shelves, and they're uh -huh. not selling. So it, it just, it's been a terrible situation, so I don't look for that. Because uh -huh. they call you in the morning, they say, Mr. Riley, we have a... Uh, a new mint? What is that word? Because I never went to school. I had no money. A new mint? Uh, it's an annuity. I'll be all right. An annuity. Mm. Right? They call you up and they say... Residual. Residual. No, they say... A guaranteed annual wage. An annuity. Yeah. So I didn't have a governess or anything. I just tried to get through. <laughs> it's an annuity. They all... It's called... Yeah. In other words, if it does I've well... I've got a block against the word. An annuity. Right. Right. So they called me up years ago. They said, you will be the fresca father. 
I, saw I was that. chosen. Yeah. As the Fresca father. <laughs> and it would be a... Annuity. 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 I'll be all right. <laughs> and so I go to New Jersey where they had... Annuities. Yes, and they had the... the uh, the, the house. They, they we're going to do the fresca. I was the fresca father. There was the fresca mother. The fresca. Yeah. <laughs> you have one minute to tell us about being the fresca. See, father. Well, I didn't get a Christmas present this year. I well, knew it was trouble. Yeah. Trouble. <laughs> right. So anyway, it snowed. You remember how it snowed? Always in oh. Jersey. Yes. And not in New Jersey. In the fresca oh, commercial. Oh, the commercial. Sure. They don't it snowed like hell in those. Yes, commercials. I remember. Well, the woman threw us out because the house was inundated with snow. Yeah. The other commercial I did was Hudson Superpower Napkins, which is on the tip of everyone's tongue. <laughs> now, I don't think they're any more in business. I don't care if I say the wrong thing. I just, I'm under pressure.
Chào mọi người Và hôm nay bên em lại về một chiếc vai ớt G Sản xuất 2010 số tự động Chiếc xe màu bạc Xe này là xe tư nhân chính chủ Một chủ từ đầu nhé Xe của một giáo viên Hay người ta gọi là viên chức Nhà nước đi sử dụng Rất là giữ gìn Chúng ta đi vào vòng quanh xe để xem tổng thể chiếc xe Để xem họ giữ gìn như nào Nói giữ gìn thì chúng ta phải có Có chứng cứ đúng không Tí vào nội thất thì các bạn sẽ biết đây, nhưng tổng thể chiếc xe Xe chủ chủ rất là giữ gìn Vai ớt là một trong những dòng rất là bền Máy móc, tiết kiệm nhiên liệu và rất là bền Vai ớt số tự động Số xa này đa số xe taxi Nhưng một số tự động thì Đa số là của cá nhân sử dụng Và xe này là xe chính chủ, một chủ Chúng ta sẽ xem đến bên trong, nội thất Để các bạn biết này Để các bạn nhìn bên trong nhé Đây Từ vô lăng cho đến ra ghế Nếu các bạn nhìn ra ghế thì các bạn biết là xe đi nhiều hay ít Vô lăng cần số Top low, top ly Nếu các bạn biết ngay Xe đi nhiều đi ít Nếu các bạn biết Đây trần thì mới cứng Nhưng mà trần xe nào chả mới đúng không Có ai sợ ở đấy đâu Nhưng nhất là cái ghế Cái ghế mà đi nhiều Cái là biết ngay Đây Cánh cửa rất là mới Keo chỉ thì đảm bảo là nguyên zin Đây hàng ghế sau cũng vậy các bạn ơi Nói chung là Hàng ghế rất là đẹp Xe chứng tỏ xe đi rất là giữ gìn Và cũng không đi nhiều Đây, máy móc thì các bạn biết rồi đó. Có dòng này rất là bền Các bạn cứ cho các bạn xem nhé Từ đinh tán cho đến ốc vít mọi thứ là Nó vẫn còn zin nhé Các bạn nhé Các bạn có thể thuê thợ thuyền đến check thoải mái Máy con này thì không phải bàn rồi Keo chỉ nguyên zin Chỉ sợ sẽ vay ớt số sàn thôi Thì tầm 90% sẽ taxi thôi Còn vay ớt số tự động thì các bạn yên tâm Chúng ta vào nội thất một lần nữa Để chúng ta xem Nhưng nội thất thì Con này còn rất đẹp Tuy nhiên là đây từ cần số đây, mọi thứ chi tiết đây Vô lăng đã được bọc và rất là đẹp Có một cái tiết, tiếc là cái xe này là xe khóa cư Không phải start top các bạn ạ Tuy nhiên là gương kính chỉnh điện Nói chung là xe vẫn còn rất là đẹp Nhưng Tổng thể chiếc xe các bạn đến xem trực tiếp Nếu nói khen đẹp nhưng mà khen cứ khen Trên video này đôi khi video nhìn nó Nó ấy này thì cũng không Không nhìn kỹ được Tuy nhiên là cũng nhìn được chi tiết phần nào Với chiếc xe này bên em đang bán với giá là 265 triệu Cho một chiếc vai ớt gò sản xuất 2010 số tự động Và ai mua liên hệ sớm với em có số điện thoại ở trên góc trái màn hình Và nếu mà uh, Thông thường là các video mà xe em bên em mà đã bán á, thì em sẽ ghim Là đã bán Em sẽ để ở uh, phần uh, Bình luận là ghi mà đã bán rồi thì các bạn cũng không phải gọi gọi quá nhiều Còn nếu các bạn mà xe mới đăng mà các bạn theo dõi mà các bạn thấy mà các bạn gọi Mà con thì em sẽ bảo là con Còn nếu mà đã bán rồi thì em sẽ ghi đã bán thì các bạn cũng đừng gọi quá nhiều Vì đã bán rồi thì gọi cũng giải quyết cái gì nữa Xe này là biển Hà Nội nhá Và ai mua đây lại sớm với em Xin chào tất cả mọi người Biển rất là đẹp 5172 Xin chào tất cả mọi người
Thank you.